Radio 94 WIP. I'm Marcus Hayes. And again, we're in the middle of Ben Simmons Sunday. The prodigal son returns. Give us a call at 215-592-9494. Ben Simmons practiced for the first time this season with the Sixers team that's paying him $33 million to play basketball this year. After a 14-day holdout that cost him a million dollars in fines, plus a five-day COVID semi-quarantine that he was uh, that, that expired, I guess, this weekend. But he refused to speak to the two dozen assembled media about all of the issues about his holdout primarily and why he wants to be traded. Uh, about the Game 7 hullabaloo, apparently Simmons had a COVID concern about whether he'd been exposed, should he play in game seven? And a lot of people are wondering, well, maybe that's uh, not so much COVID related as ego related. And of course, him not dunking in game seven, one of the few shots that he's willing to take is a, is a dunk, but clearly he didn't want to take that shot with about three and a half minutes left because he thought he was going to get fouled. And then you they had the, the off season stuff with Ben Simmons where he went to Wimbledon very quickly after his uh, his ig ignom ignominious ex uh, expulsion from the playoffs, and was photographed uh, in an amorous embrace, and bought a big house outside of Los Angeles, where most people think he think he wants to to wind up to uh, continue his uh, his basketball career, and who knows what else is is in the offing for for, for Ben Simmons. Uh, Again, 215-592-9494. Let's go to Joe on his cell. Joe. Hey, Marcus. How you doing? Excellent, Joe. How are you today? Don't don't tell me you want to talk about Ben Simmons and his shooting woes. That's what I want to talk about. But let me, <laughs> let me preface this by saying what you, you said a little bit before the break. I believe at his size, he's very close to being a generational talent. Love watching him. Now, Joe, do you, do you have any sort of basketball background? Uh, played a little bit, um, grew up in Philly, played small college, played in the Sunny Hill Lake and the Baker Lake. Oh, so that's that's a pretty good pedigree there. Well, thanks. Um, but one, one, of the, one of the things that kills me, just like probably everyone else watching him who did play a little ball in this city, is a free throw is called free because it's free. <laughs> it has nothing to do with his talent. He has, it's a skill. You can learn that skill. We have Herb McGee in this town who's in the, in the Hall of Fame for teaching people how to shoot. Mm -hmm. I would bet money that Jay Wright learned how to shoot from Herb McGee. Most of us did. Um, it, but Ben could get shooting coaches from anywhere. Well, um, well Joe, he did. He, he, he hired his brother. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you don't think those sessions were, were as, as fruitful as somebody, as a, maybe a session with a guy like Herb McGee who's literally taught thousand if you traced herb mcgee's lineage do you think it would be like a million total points something like that uh, probably more and herbie scored a whole bunch of them himself in right. Textile. right right um but uh, my other thing speaking of his brother and i'm going to bring his father into this i believe ben is so talented that they tried to switch him from a righty to a lefty at a young age well, why do you say what evidence him, do you have i'm sorry go ahead my, my evidence is just watching him play, Marcus. And when when I watch him play, and I've had I've I've been privileged to go see him in person half a dozen times in the last two seasons. When he's in the lane and he's moving in transition, and he has the ability to finish, three out of four times he finishes with his right hand. It's and weird, then right? Flow. It's weird, oh, right? Like it's weird that, that a guy who is supposed to be predominantly left-handed reverts to his right where. Most defenders are, if they're not thinking, they're, they're guarding the right hand instinctively, right? So why would you revert to the hand that they're going to guard instinctively when the left hand is a natural advantage? So, so do you think that's an accurate observation of mine? I mean, that, that he finishes more often with his right than his left in the lane? I think, that he, he, I think that he finishes unnecessarily a lot with his right hand. Like if, you, if the guy's taking your left rim. away, you're going to the rim, you want to protect, you put it in your right hand. I understand that. But yeah, he finishes. It seems like he's just as comfortable, if not more comfortable, finishing with his right hand. Do you, do you think then that if if you were going to reconstruct Ben Simmons from the ground up, would you consider, okay, okay, Ben, let's take this summer and make you a right-handed shooter? Because clearly the left-handed stuff isn't working. I, I don't think his ego will let him do that. I, I'm not 
versed enough in basketball coaching and mechanics and psychology to actually know if that could happen at this point. Mm -hmm. I think Atlanta broke him um, psychologically. Mm -hmm. um, one, one of the things about Ben that's, that makes him so much fun for us to watch is when he's moving in transition or when he's running the floor or when he's stopping people, it's great. But in the regular season in the NBA, the, the, the opposing team on a road trip doesn't have time to game plan for Ben Simmons. Right. You put him in a five or a seven game series and you get a good coach like Nick Nurse or I'm sorry, I forget the guy from Boston's name. It, it's, 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 probably, it's like red meat to them to, to game plan on, on, a, on a, a four on five defensive set when they know he's not going to shoot, when they can back off of him and insult him and insult the fans and insult the Sixers when, when the defender is, is four or five feet off of Ben, which has to, has to kill Joe. It has to kill everybody else. Well, it, it's, it, it's fascinating you said that. I mean, it was Brad Stevens, the guy in, in Boston, sort of set the template, right? He said, okay, we're, we're going we're gonna to put a six-foot-ten guy on you and just have him stand at the free throw line with his arms extended, uh, effectively playing a zone defense, but he's outside the lane <laughs> and because we know that you are not a threat to do anything. And we're going to take away at least two entry pass lanes this way. And we're going to dare you to either shoot or turn the ball over or make a bad decision. Effectively playing four on five, four on five offense. Um, you said generational talent. Where, where do you think Ben should be used? What, what would you do? Where would you put him if you were his coach? I mean, I, I grew up watching Magic Johnson. Actually, you know, he, Magic's not much older than me, but um, a Magic Johnson role. He sees the floor. He passes the ball wonderfully. But you know, just take a couple shots. You know, make make the defense play honest. <laughs> well, I mean, well, but, thank you so much for the call, Joe. I I, I agree. The, the greatest insubordination you can you can I guess affect is to just not do what your coach asks you to do as part of a strategy and part of a scheme. And if you remember, I think it was three years ago, Brett Brown 